In the first episode, I discussed the manager I'd bring in to replace Ten Hag for the rest of the season. But in this video, I'm going to tell you every player I would sign for United this summer. For now, don't worry about the finances or tactical setup. I'll explain that in further episodes. But I just wanted to lay everything out so you can see my thinking. But towards the end of the video, I'll also be identifying two players who I genuinely believe have world-class potential, who United could sign for less than £25 million combined. But it will certainly have to be quick and decisive. And being decisive in the transfer market used to be something that United were renowned for under Sir Alex Ferguson. If you, like me, are a fan of retro jerseys, head over to Jersey FIFA where you can check out some of the shirts of decisive iconic signings that Ferguson made from Cantona to Andy Cole to Roy Keane, Wayne Rooney and of course Robin Van Persie. You can use code Atlantis at checkout for a discount. A link will be in my Instagram bio which I will leave linked in the description. So for the start of next campaign, the 20. 25 season, this would be the squad I would assemble as director of football, with me also assuming that I am the manager deciding the system and the style of play, or at the very least choosing who the next manager will be, just for simplicity's sake. So Andre Onana would be the starting keeper with Heaton or another homegrown keeper as third choice, and I'd also look to bring in Jason Steele from Brighton who would also fill a homegrown spot and is also a competent Premier League standard keeper who is also accustomed to a Deserby style of play which I do think is essential even for United's second choice keeper. I'd move on Wambasaka and bring in Jeremy Frimpong who is one of the, if not the best offensive right backs in world football this season. And at left back I'd also recall Alvaro Fernandez from Granada instead of signing Regalon permanently as I do think United need to be providing a constant supply of youth players to the first team, maybe one or two a season. And with Luke Shaw and Malassia there as well, Fernandez doesn't have the pressure of having to come in and be an elite level player or even be a starter as of next season. At centre back I'd move on Varane and Harry Maguire. I'd probably keep Lindelof for another season just for squad depth with Lissandro Martinez and Jean-Claire Todibo the centre backs but I'm also looking for versatile centre backs who can interchange between centre back and full back positions. Luke Shaw is already perfect for this on the left but I'd also bring in Mohamed Simakan from RB Leipzig to perform this versatile role in the squad but from the right. Now the holding midfield row is arguably the most important for United to solve. Like Varane, I think Casemiro and his big wages have to be moved on, McTominay has to be cashed in on, and Eriksen I think ideally you would allow him to move on a free or even on a loan, but depending on the budget and the circumstances, he may have to be retained for one more season. But a holding midfielder who I think is the closest to Rodri in the Premier League, and arguably even in the whole of Europe is Bubakar Kamara of Aston Villa who to me is one of the most underrated players around and I can't believe he hasn't been linked with big moves already. Kamara would be the perfect player to start ahead of Mainu with the United youngster being ideal for that role in the squad of coming in to replace Kamara sometimes as a sole holding midfielder when needed but also probably the majority of his playing time coming from being used in a double pivot alongside the Villa man. Now ahead of the holding midfielder you do have a number of options, I'd like to see Dan Gore get a lot more responsibility next season as like Alvaro Fernandez, he seems like he's now at the perfect age to be integrated into the first team with him turning 20 in September. And of course you have both Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes, one of whom will likely be guaranteed to start most games. Whilst I don't see Bruno Fernandes being able to be used in a strict double pivot in the midfield, I definitely think that Mason Mount can develop the ability to do this under the right coaching, in the optimal role, in the right system, alongside a holding midfielder like Kamara. But like with the back line, I'm also looking for versatility higher up the pitch, and so that's why, essentially as what would be a Marcus Rashford replacement, Florian Verts would be the player I target. Now because Verts like Musiala will both attract huge interest this summer, when I do my video specifically on him, I'll also bring up some alternatives as well. Though the reason I've gone for Verts rather than say a more natural left winger like a Matoma or a Liao is largely because of Garnacho. Whilst at the moment next season I think Garnacho is probably best suited to be in an understudy to a truly elite level player on the left and also getting some game time on the right as well, in the next 18 to 24 months I firmly expect the Argentine to develop into a crucial starting player for United and so I don't want an attacker like Liao or Matoma to be coming in with both really having to be used as a left winger from a wide position to get the best out of them as this is only going to create an issue further down the line particularly if you are signing them for the sort of fee that I think both would command. Matoma likely around 50 to 60 million with one year left on his contract and Liao who'd be at least 120 million pounds given that he has a release clause in his AC Milan contract of around 150. Signing Florian 
converts, however, would allow you to use him in a variety of different positions and roles, but I'll come on to the tactical side of things in a later episode, but just briefly, Verts can be used from the left, drifting in field between the lines, completing a box midfield alongside Bruno Fernandes, ahead of a double pivot, or he could also be used in that Bruno Fernandes row ahead of a double pivot, or even alongside Fernandes as two free eights ahead of a holding midfielder like Kamara, with one of the fullbacks, Dalof for example, inverting inside in possession, to create a protective base of a double pivot ahead of a back two or a back three. And not just that, Verts is also legitimately one of the best under 23 players in world football, and someone who I think alongside Musiala and Pedri will be competing for the mantle of being Europe's best attacking midfielder over the coming decade. And so this leaves us with the right wing and centre forward positions. Now in a previous video I did last month, I did speak about Michael Elise and why I'd sign him particularly because of how he would work with Frimpong and Simakan behind him on the right flank from a tactical point of view. However, having thought about it, I'd probably just bring back Greenwood if the board agreed to it, as I don't see United getting the sort of fee for Greenwood that they would probably need to then reinvest in someone like Elise because of the whole situation surrounding him and his 18 month absence from the game. And to me, Greenwood and Ahmad are actually a very good pairing for that right wing position in the squad, with Greenwood being more of a goal scoring inside forward like Mo Salah and Ahmad being more of a natural winger or creator like Mahrez. With Anthony Martial finally leaving, United also need a centre forward and this is where we come onto my bargain options for United in 2024. Alex Garcia and Cyril Garassi, who usually you'd expect to command fees of at least 40 to 50 million pounds. However, both have release clauses in their contract that would cost United a combined 25 million pounds. That's because Garassi has a release clause in his Stuttgart contract of just 17.5 million euros, around 15 million pounds. Whilst Girona's Alex Garcia had a release clause that was rumored to be around 20 million euros. However, according to Barcelona, who are also interested in the player, the release clause is just 12 million euros, which is around 10 million pounds. Garcia is a creative central midfield in the mould of someone like a Luka Modric, whilst Girassi is a clinical, technically gifted centre forward, similar to someone like Radamel Falcao. And this season, you can make a claim for either being in the top three players in their given positions throughout the whole of Europe. And when in the next video I analyse both in greater depth, as well as looking at a potential alternative to Alex Garcia, you'll see exactly why. However, United will have to act quickly, as given that both players have release clauses and are both attracting interest from big clubs, United may have to move before the end of the season, or even in January, in order to confirm their signatures. And so this would be my squad going into next season, as well as the players I would sell. I will either in the next episode, or at least in the next two or three, go over the cost, and why I think this can definitely be fairly feasibly financed by United through selling players like McTominay, Casemiro and Rashford and getting their massive wages off of the books. The homegrown player issue should be sorted with Steele and Frimpong coming in as well as the likes of Gore and Fernandes being promoted and of course if Mason Greenwood returns as well. So our first impressions, let me know what you think of my selections, which ones you agree with, which ones you disagree with. I'll explain my decisions in greater detail of course in future episodes but I thought I'd just lay everything out rather than hold off from episode to episode.